this is the uh, 15th video, I think. Um, this is just an update of what's happening and how I'm feeling, I guess. Um, I am currently having my third dose of chemotherapy. So the first two doses I had were um, staying at the hospital as an inpatient. Um, this one uh, I've had out of hospital. Um, you still go to the hospital for the first bit. So <clears throat> I had um, spent all day in hospital having um, blood test and a meeting with the oncologist and um, about four and a half hours of chemotherapy by drip. And then the chemotherapy lasts another 48 hours of continuous drip. And it is continuous, so I've actually got the chemotherapy medicine in here. I say medicine, but it's um, cytotoxic, so that means it's a poison. Um, <clears throat> and there's a thing in here which um, slowly releases the medicine at, um, I think it's three milliliters per hour. So I wear this for 48 hours, so it's connected to a needle that goes into a pipe that's been permanently installed in my body that goes towards my heart um, to try and get the chemotherapy in there. Um, it's not very nice having it. Um, the side effects tend to happen kind of after you stop it, although this time the side effects happened quicker than the previous two times. Um, the first time I had chemotherapy, the skin rash was so bad that we had to um, skip the component that causes the skin rash. But the skin ra um, the component that causes the skin rash is very, very important for me to have. So I skipped it for number two, and the skin rash has kind of cleared up quite a lot. It's still red, but it was bleeding, and it was all over my nose, and it was complete agonizing pain. It goes all the way down um, to my stomach and it's all on my back and back of the neck. Um, but as you can see, or well hopefully it, it's, it's just little red dots, um, the real skin rash is kind of white, pus filled, um, very, very painful spots that break and bleed. And um, it's absolute agony, but it's very important for me to have because <coughs> chemotherapy on its own will not have any effect on one of the places, my, on the most serious place, my cancer spread to which is the to name. Um, so that rash is probably going to start, majorly start tomorrow or the day after. Um, it's going to be tough. Um, it's the most pain I've ever experienced. Um, really quite incredible. So I'm trying to, trying to prepare for that. Um, and I'm feeling um, very frightened, to be honest, about lots of things. Um, but obviously, the, the main thing is the very short life expectancy, um, which is seven to nine months from when the cancer's found. At least, that's the life expectancy that I, I read a lot in various medical papers I've been looking at. Um, I'm trying to, and, and that's, caught, that's caused by the fact that the cancer is bred to the peritoneum. So, life, average life expectancy for people with bowel cancer that has spread maybe just to the liver um, and the lymph nodes is actually good now. It's like 32 months, it's like two and a half years, um, which would be amazing because if I could live two and a half years, that's you know, two and a half years where some um, other treatment might be possible. And um, it would be... So I'm just um, <coughs> It would be two and a half years with my children. Um, which is my main priority at the moment. It's just, <coughs> you know, I've got to fight cancer, but I've got to spend time with my kids as well, as long as I can. <coughs> my son is um, seven, my son Edward. My daughter Jessica is, um, she's just turning three, so 
now is the time when she's just starting to form long-term memories. So um, <clears throat> I need more time with them both. Um, in parallel to the chemotherapy, I'm having two other types of um, therapy, which is um, immunotherapy <clears throat> and also hypothermia therapy. Um, the hypothermia therapy is designed to for two things. One thing is attack cancer using heat, and the other thing is use heat to make the cancer more effective for um, being treated by chemotherapy. So um, that's a good therapy to have. Um, I'm having it once a week. I might change to twice a week um, because it might have more effect. I've been told if you have it more than twice a week, the effect can actually be reduced because your body might form things called heat shock proteins, which basically, I guess it's a bit like getting a burn inside and then that heat shock protein that kind of layer will protect the cancer from further heat and maybe even from the chemo as well. But twice a week seems possible. Um, it's not covered by national health insurance, um, <clears throat> but hypothermia treatment is very cheap. It's um, 10,000 a time, which is that 150 pounds or something um, very very cheap compared to immunotherapy which is about 15,000 pounds a cycle um, thank you so much for the donations to to my cancer fund which is at www.matthewdons.org every donation makes a big difference because um, obviously it's a donation which helps but also when people see it it inspires other people to donate um, the immunotherapy um, could um, help attack the cancer, which would be fantastic. I'm actually having two types of immunotherapy. Uh, one is um, where my cells are taken, white blood cells are taken and trained to attack cancer and put back in the body, and they get used up, and you do it again and again and again as much as you can. Um, and the other one is actually making a vaccine. Um, that's then put in my body that tries to teach my body's immune system to um, attack the cancer and it's sort of that's one where if it did work very small chance of working but if it did work it would it would be teaching my body to to make the um, um, appropriate uh, antibodies to attack the cancer um, and that would be not something you have to just kind of keep repeat, repeatedly doing because your immune system learns um, there is possibility that um, these three things together, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and hypothermia therapy, there, there's a possibility that they could um, reduce the cancer enough for me to be considered for surgery. Um, there is a type of surgery that people with the very worst type of cancer can have. Um, I'm currently not a candidate for it. Basically, my, my it wouldn't um, do me any good because um, the cancer tumours in my liver are too big. But if the cancer tumours reduced, I might become a candidate for it. Um, in which case, I would have the hardest decision of my life is whether to take that option or not. Um, seems about 10% of people die during the surgery or within 30 days of the surgery. Um, for those who survive, about 40% have very serious complications afterwards. Um, I think everyone who has the surgery has um, a bunch of disabilities afterwards. Um, however, in cases where it has worked for people, um, there a, seems to be a 60% chance of, of being alive five years later. The surgery is called um, well, it's got two names, either called debulking, which is a horrible, horrible term, or it's called cytoreduction. Cyto just means cancer, so cytoreduction is removing cancer. Um, the surgery is about 10 hours long. Um, it's about the most surgery a human can possibly survive. Um, it remove, tries to remove all the visible cancer from your body, um, it, uh, so it can only be done for people who the cancer is only in the abdomen 
So it'd be people who'd sort of cancer in the peritoneum and the lymph nodes in the abdomen and in the tu um, liver, like me. Um, or if you had cancer as well in your appendix or something like that. Um, the treatment removes um, a lot of healthy tissue where cancer could potentially hide. Um, I think it's a standard they remove all of your, almost all of your intestines, so all of the large intestine which takes water from the food, almost all of the small intestine that takes nutrition from the food. Um, our small intestine is about 15 meters long and we need to live kind of disabled but to still live, I think we need about 15 centimeters so they can cut away a huge amount of that. They take out the gallbladder, the appendix, they scrape off most of the peritoneum, they take away half your liver, they take the protective fat that covers the organs of the abdomen, take away your navel, that's your belly button, um, they take away um, the part of the diaphragm, that's the muscle under the lungs. Um, it's brutal in the extreme, it's why about 10% of people are going to die during or shortly after the surgery. However, um, I mean at the moment I'm not even a candidate for it, so it, so it, it would be it's kind of a it would be a future thing depending on how if if I survive a bit longer um, and if my current treatment regime of those three treatments possibly shrinks the the liver tumours enough and and maybe also the um, reduces the cancer lymph nodes enough. Um, so that's something I've been kind of thinking about, even though it's not an option for me at the moment. Um, and um, I've been, I haven't, I haven't been reading anything at the moment. I mean, I haven't been reading any books at the moment, but I listen to audiobooks. I just finished listening to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is um, a trilogy in five parts. Um, and um, I've, I've read all the books a couple of times um, that was um, interesting to listen to um, it's not particularly good especially the later books um, but the the first book Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and especially the BBC TV series of it which is just incredible much better than the book actually um, but the first book was hugely hugely influential on, on my life and that TV series um, probably you know one of the biggest in influences of, of my life really um it's been a tough few days very very tough um but i've got through it because of your support the financial support um those donations but also all the messages um that you send me on Facebook and um, those um, those times when, when I just get that alert saying you've shared my video or you've shared a post that mentions me um, that means so much to me, it really does um, and um, yeah, please, please continue <laughs> um, I can see on the I can see on the donations page that when people share things, more donations come in from people that person knows, um, which is just amazing. My friend um, Angela Waters she shared um, one of my video some of my videos on the donation page, and uh, a huge donation came in from one of her Facebook friends who she hasn't even met, I believe. Um, but that's incredible. So. Thank you so much for that. The website is matthewdoms.org M-A-T-T-H-E-W-D for Delta, O for Oscar, N for Lemba, S for Sierra, dot org, O-R-G, Oscar Romeo Golf. Um, please keep sharing and uh, yeah, your support keeps me going. Um, especially on the toughest days. Thank you. More videos coming very, very soon.